Hello my vacuum enthusiast, it's your favourite vacuum king. Today I'm going to be unboxing not one, not two, but three Dyson vacuum cleaners. These are new old stock and I'm going to unbox all of them in this video. So we got the DCR1 standard in the middle, followed by the DCR4 Absolute Plus in yellow, purple and grey, followed by another DCR4 Absolute Plus in purple and green. I'm going to start with the DCR1 because not only is it the first Dyson pretty much, but it's also got the most tattiest box. Here's what the box looks like. On this side it tells you why dust bags are terrible for airflow and why the Dyson Dual Cyclone is in fact superior. On the other side it just says Dyson, how it's the world's first bagless vacuum with no loss of suction. And on the other side it tells you about the features of the DCO one as you can see. Right, so let's get the box open then. Whoa, that is a beauty and a half. Look at that, look how shiny it is. So, first of all, we got the manual. I like the old school Dyson manuals because they're not only really colorful and elegant, but they were really detailed as well with lots of information in them. So we got the attachments as well. So you've got a DCL4 crevice tool, a DCL4 stair tool, along with a DCL1 adapter and dusting brush. This is a late model DCL1. Hence why it has DCR4 tools, which I do prefer actually to the DCR1 tools. So we got some DCR1 filters, followed by a DCR1 filter with the cage as well. Look, it's got a filter cage with a washable, reusable filter. Love that. Now let's get the beast itself out of the box so I can show you all about it. The last thing in there is the wand, so let's get that out quickly. That is beautiful. Look how shiny that is. Even the wand itself. Looks phenomenal. Okay, and here's everything at the box. As you can see, the DCR1 is looking stunning. This is really nostalgic for me, guys. I grew up with a DCR1. This is the vacuum that started off my passion and enthusiasm for vacuum cleaners. This machine has a special place in my heart. As a result of who I am today, isn't that mad to think that a vacuum cleaner like this has made me into a certain person? <laughs> The holes on this is clear, which indicates it's a late DCR1 because most DCR1s had just a greyish silver hose. But no, this one's in fact see-through, so that's really cool. Right, let's assemble this Dyson then. So what you do is you grab your hose cuff. This is a rubbery thing, by the way. No buttons or clips or anything. You just force it onto the end of the wand with a bit of a twisting action as you push it along. And then what you do is you slide the wand, push it down until it locks home. And there you are, that's fully assembled. That's all you need to do apart from putting the tools on. Now I need to get this rubber band off. So what you do, right? Oh yeah, look, it's got the story of Dyson as well. Isn't that cool? And also that little booklet. I'll show you that in a bit. But first we're gonna take the rubber band off. So what you do is you lift off the bin by pressing the catch on the front. Then you lift the cycle on all the way up until it um, pops from the machine itself. And then you can remove the rubber band. Now, here are the filters. Now there's a filter on the side, so you lift this up. There's your S-level submicron filter, which you just open up like a little door. And there's a filter which you're meant to change. Oh, what is that? Bits and bobs. Anyways, that's there. These were basically electrostatic filters, so they were supposed to capture dust a little bit better than a standard little cloth or whatever it is. But yeah, the washable ones are better because you can actually wash them and they are a little bit thicker as well. But you just push that in and there's your pre-motor filter. Your post-motor filter is located under this floppy thing. So you lift that up and there's your other filter, which is exactly the same as the pre-motor filter. Oh my days, I could probably see the motor in there. Is it? I hope it's... Yes! It's a YV motor! I was hoping it would be a YV motor instead of Amitech. But I'm glad to see that because the DCL one I grew up with had a YV motor instead of the quieter Amitech motor. Now the Amitech motor as featured on the DCL one dish still is actually quieter. But the YV one it sounds more like a traditional bagless upright vacuum. And also it's more nostalgic for me and it's more powerful. Did I mention that? There we are. Now I have clipped the cycle and successfully back into the machine. So here you can see it says say goodbye to the bag. On top of the cyclone, you've got the featured silent save one sticker showing you why bags are ineffective compared to the dual cyclone. And attached here, you've got the story of Dyson. So let's have a look at the story of the Dyson dual cyclone. So on page one, you can see James Dyson. Feel free to pause the video and have a read as I go along these pages. Page three and four, page five and six. And that's the back of it. Now, why bags are inferior compared to the Dyson dual cyclone? So it shows you the problem with dust bags on the left, which are just paper bags, by the way. 
and why the dual cyclone doesn't do suction. And on the next page, we've got the same thing in more detail now. And a pile of dirt showing you the dangers of dirt being left behind in your home and why it's important to have vacuum that doesn't lose suction. And there's a back of that as well, showing a DCL5 and a DCL3. So it's definitely a later model. I'm not sure if I want to take this off. Shall I leave it on or just take it off? I don't know. But anyways, that's on there for now. It's got the cable grommet because DCL1s had a common issue where the cable would break with the constant flexing where the cable enters the machine. So that's why Dyson incorporated this rubber piece to prevent that stress. And also this little donut as well, which is designed to basically cause less tension on the cable. So when I pull on this, that's like a spring loaded little thing to prevent more wear on the cable entry right there. But Dyson eventually took these off because they were causing more problems than they were solving. And here is a lovely Dyson plug in yellow and gray. Look how shiny that is. I love that little red piece as well. I don't know why. I used to be fascinated by that thing alone as a kid. <laughs> okay, let me just undo this cable, guys. I'm gonna give it a quick test run. You know what, guys? I haven't actually hoovered today, so this thing is definitely going to be finding some dust and dirt. So, you know what? I did vacuum last night with the Shark and Vax Air, but as you can see by the set of my carpets, now it needs a vacuuming again. Now, because this cable's been wrapped up in a circle for many years, the cable isn't going to be looking as tidy on board as it should do after a few rotations. But yeah, there's your lovely yellow cable clip as well. Now let's take a look at the seal number data sticker. So you can see it says it's made in Malmesbury. It's 1200 watts max and it's a DCL1 standard UK vacuum. You have a blockage inspection port here and also another one for the hose, which I can't seem to pull out right now because it's really in there and I can't really reach it out. Look at the wheels, guys. They're really shiny, aren't they? Yeah, this thing has been stored. It's got a little bit of um, thingy bobs that'll need wiping off. Oh, look at that. It's beautiful, guys. Alhamdulillah for this. Praise be to God. Now, here's a brush bar. Very soft bristles like the DCO ones always had. They stick out the sole plate very slightly, a couple of millimetres, as you can see. So, yeah, these were only decent for low power carpets. They weren't actually deep cleaners. And this is the bumper. This right here is your big foot. That's pretty much all there is. The DC01. Oh yeah, there's a sticker on the side as well showing you how it's the world's first bagless vacuum cleaner with 100% suction 100% of the time, along with all the features in yellow. Okay, let's put the tools on now. So the adapter goes on this side only, the dusting brush on top of that. And on the other side, we've got the crevice tool. I like this crevice tool, you know, it's a decent design. It's just, it's just simple and it works perfectly well. That goes on that side, along with the stair tool on top of it. And there we are, the DCL1 is now fully assembled. So there it is, that's the DCL1. Let's move on to the DCL4 Purple and Green Absolute. Okay, so this one's a Dyson DCL4 Absolute Plus in Purple and Green with the Dyson Lifetime MEMA filters. MEMA stands for Maximum Efficiency, Maximum Airflow. It's got the HEPA filter with a bacteria killing screen. Perfect for allergy sufferers. And on this side, it tells you about the dust bags being inferior compared to the Dyson Dual Cyclone. And this is my favorite part about the box, guys. Look how detailed it is. Dyson really put in the effort on their older boxes. Look at even things like that. That is lovely, isn't it? So yeah, you got all the features on this side as well. Okay, enough rambling. Let's just go straight for it. I need to be careful with this box as well because it is also kind of water damaged, so it's going to be falling apart really easily. Just like the DCL1 box especially. But here it is. Oh, yes. That is a beautiful purple and green Buzz Lightyear looking vacuum. So here we got the hose attachment, which is a lovely clear design when extended, but purple when it's not extended. You got the hose detachment button there, along with the suction control button right there as well, along with the cable hook on the bottom. We got the Dyson DCL4 user manual. We've got a bag of lovely neon green looking tools. I like the green colour, you know, it's almost like it's fluorescent when it's not. And here we've got the wand as well. Look how beautiful that is. It's even got the green no loss of suction sticker. So it is an earlier one, not the earliest DCL4, but yeah, definitely not a late model. It's got the spring loaded wand cap as well. Now let's pull the Dyson out of the box. MashaAllah, Allah Mubarak, may Allah put blessings into these machines, I mean. Now this one has a story of Dyson, as you can see, just like the DCL1 has Dyson washing machine. So this thing definitely came out in 
2001, this must be a 2001 or even 2002 DCL4. So we've established from this that the Dyson washing machine is featured on this Story of Dyson booklet. And that came out in 2001 and two, I believe, or something like that. So it's definitely not an early DCL4, I'd say more of a mid-range DCL4. It hasn't got the pointy up cable grommet. It's still got the old school version. So yeah, not late model. So you grab your hose by the lower hook end and you push that home until it locks into place. And there you are, your hose is now fitted. Grab the wand and the hose cuff, push that into the hose, and it's not going to go anywhere until you press on the semicircle button to unlock that, which then enables you to push the wand into the hose, slide that all the way down, and then it locks into place like so. Now, as for the tool storage, your stair tool goes on top of the cycling like so. The dusting brush goes on the top as well like so. That's for your crevice tool, that is located on the back of the wand, just like so. And there's a DCL for all fully assembled. Now let's have a look at the filter. So you're pushing this green catch on the top of the cyclone. Then you press on this filter release latch, which then enables you to look at the filter. To empty a DCL for, you just lift up from there with that green clip, and then you can access your cyclone and bin like so, ready to empty out your contents and give that a brushing or a wipe down. There's also a clip on the back as well, so make sure that's locked into place as well. So this sticker on the back is where you circle your two annual filter washes. So let's say in January and July of every year, every six months you wash your pre-motor filter. And your post-motor absolute filter with the bacteria killing screen is located right under the bin above the motor unit. There's a sticker on the Cyclone showing you about the Cyclonic system and the lifetime filters. The self-adjusting head pivots on two axes to keep level with the floor on any carpet thickness. This is one axis that makes the head go up and down and the second axis is this floating thing right here. And whilst we're at the base, we can see the brush bar. Relatively soft bristles, more on a stiff side. I'd say very, very slightly stiffer than the DCL1 bristles. So that's good to see. That's how far they stick out the base. So it is a little bit more than the DCL1. So that's good to see. We've got the nice rubber roller wheels intact. So that's also a great sign to see, along with the clear internal hose. It is actually discolored though, for some reason. I don't know why that is. Here we've got the rubber wheels, the airway inspection ports, showing you how you've got a removable valve pipe for blockage access and also the U-Bend on the back as well. So here's a serial number data sticker showing you that it's a DCO4 purple and lime. It is also 1200 watts like the DCO1 and it's made in Malmesbury, England. So it doesn't mention Malaysia. I'm assuming this is either made in 2001 or 2002. The date on the plug says 2001. So this is just about when the DCO7 came out. That's very cool. So the adaptive brush control, patent pending, the clutch mechanism allows you to turn off the brush bar for rugs and smooth floors. And it's because of this, the belt on the DCL4 should never need replacing. And that's true, you know, these machines can go on for many years without needing a belt change because of that clutch that's in there. And then you got the engineering and design awards won by Dyson, along with the different museums that they're presented in. So yeah, one final look at this beauty before I demo it in action. I think I'm going to do that, I don't know. So yeah, that is a DCL4 Absolute Plus in purple and lime. Now moving on to the DCL4 Absolute Plus in yellow, purple and grey. Now let's open this box up then. Now this is a late model DCL4 made in Malaysia, so it is going to be a little bit different. But there's the front of the box anyways. And just like the other ones, it's got the HEPA filter with the bacteria killing screen. So that's great to see. A diagram showing you that the DCL4 does not lose suction compared to other vacuums. Wait, hold on, what are these vacuums? I believe that's an Electrolux Cyclone Power. What is that, a Pure Power, I think? That looks like some sort of Panasonic, and that's definitely a Panasonic. And also my favourite part of the box right here about the different features. Look, see how they colour coded and everything? Designed specifically for this box and vacuum alone. It's not a default box where it's like a one-size-fits-all thing, do you know what I mean? Now this DCL4 has been stored away for a while. When I picked it up right, the guy goes that his wife just prefers a Henry over this DCL4 because this thing is just simply way too big and heavy and the Henry is more lighter, easy to navigate around with. And I was like, you know what, fair play. Right, here it is. Oh yes, beauty. So first up, we've got the hose attachment. Got the wand attachment right here as well. Yeah, that Nolas and suction sticker is not color coded. It's got the purple handle grip as well, and also a springless wand cap. Here we are. 
Okay, now here's the yellow DCO4 Absolute Plus. Now, the original versions of the Absolute range would have had a purple cable along with the green or yellow plug. But I believe that's just a 90s thing because this is an early 2000s green DCR4, but it's still got the grey cable. Okay, now let's pull this uh, manual off, the DCR4. There we are. Along with the rubber band, which is a thinner rubber band compared to the other ones. Here's the DCR4 manual, exactly the same as the other one. And again, the story of Dyson. Okay, that's weird. Look at the hose, it's a bit dusty. My DCR7 was like this as well, but it's definitely got that new feeding. It's definitely shiny in there, so that's unusual. Anyways, I'm gonna put it on now. Okay, that's locked into place securely. Pop on the hose onto the wand, push that in. Oh look, this is, um, I believe they changed the metal on this DCO4, you know, because this is like a white color, whereas the older ones had a more shiny silver metal finish. Push the wand in, there we are, it's locked into place. It's got this label attached to the cable as well, showing you to wind the cable in an anti-clockwise direction, not the other way around, because if you do that, see they changed the design of this because they were having problems in the older models. So the cable's pointing up now to reduce stress on the cable, and that's why you wind it up in this way, upright, rather than clockwise where you would be bending the cable like so. And the cable and plug are just the standard default grey colour. And yes, I am going to be using this, guys. What's going to happen in 100 years when I'm not around? These things aren't going to last forever. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, lovely attachments. So, crevice wheel on the back, right here. Stair wheel over here. And the dusting brush goes on the other side. So there's that DCL4 Absolute Plus. Look at all of them now. Lovely. Okay, now being the late model DCL4, this one doesn't have as much stickers as the early DCL4s do. But you can see it looks more tidy as a result of that. So it looks more presentable. It looks more smart. I don't know how to explain it, but it just does. Shiny, elegant bin, as you can see. You can see right inside the shroud. And here's a filter. Ah, oh, yes, fresh. And there's your absolute filter in there as well. As you can see, very basic DCR4. So here's a valve pipe. Pull that off. It's really shiny everywhere, isn't it? The serial number data sticker for this one says it's made in Malaysia. Being a made in Malaysia machine, they have cheapened down on things like the wheels. As you can see, they are now plastic. They've got DCL1 wheels, as you can see. I'd say these are actually more higher quality than the early DCL4s. Yes, the wheels might not be rubber, but at the same time, the plastic is a lot more sturdy and robust than the early models. And here's a brush file, as you can see, it is grey. Okay, now these bristles are actually a lot stiffer than the other DCL4s, so that's great to see. That's how much they stick at the base. Yeah, the bristles are noticeably more stiffer than the early DCL4s. Here's your internal hose as well. Nice, springy, self-adjusting head. There's a little bit of damage on here, but I'm not too fussed about that. You can't be too picky with anything, do you know what I mean? So this is just great. All praise be to God that I have one of these. I can't be upset, do you know what I mean? I should be grateful, yeah? Yeah, and that part should be yellow, but it's now clear on the late DCL4s. And that's all of them. MashaAllah. All praise be to God. This is a blessing. You can't be too fussy that the box is tatty, the DCL4 absolute there is damaged, it's not as colourful, it's not an early model with extra stickers. Just be grateful, man. This is literally it. And they're not going to last forever, so I will be using these, do you know what I mean? No point letting it collect dust and rotting away, disintegrating away, where in a hundred years time, I won't be around here anymore, and these machines will be, I don't know, in a landfill or crushed to dust. So get the most enjoyment out of your vacuum, people. Don't store them away looking pretty, pretty, pretty for nothing. So I'm going to be using the DCO4 Absolute Plus. Let's do that together then, yeah? It's brand new, never been used before. I'm going to use it on a dirty carpet. Ready? Nice one! So yeah, it's picked up a decent amount of dust. I haven't vacuumed today, but I had vacuumed last night with that shark over there and a Vax Air. Now let's try out the DCO one next. Okay, time to test the DCO one. Ooh, yeah, man. That's not even too loud, you know. Little bit of dust. I can't get the one now. Look, there we are. Yeah. 
That was beautiful, guys. You know the um, YV motors in these? I believe they're made in Japan and the Amitech ones are made in Italy. Yeah, I prefer this motor because it's nostalgic for me. I'd say the Amitech ones are slightly more reliable, but this one has more suction than the Amitech motor. So it's down to personal preference, really. That smells nice. It's so nostalgic. It's like if Windows XP had a smell, I imagine it smelled like that. So let's just say it smells like Windows XP, right? <laughs> And last but not least, the DCL4 Buzz Lightyear Edition. Fantastic suction right there. So yeah guys, that has been the extravagant unboxing of three new old stock Dysons. Hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe and stay tuned for more. This has been your host T from Power 786 signing out. I'll see you in my next video. Bye, have a beautiful time.